sometimes controversial, always politically incorrect, and pro-life without exception, without compromise, and without apology. It's the Pro-Life America podcast with your hosts, Sarah Waits and the president of Life Dynamics, Mark Crutcher. Hey guys, welcome to the show. I'm Mark Crutcher, as you heard. And joining me again is my comical sidekick, Sarah Waits. Hello, everyone. She's back from the dead. She yep. recovered from her cold or whatever it was she had. I think Sinus infection. I think basically she just didn't want to come to work. So. She oh, did. yeah, that was totally it. I decided to forfeit my voice and feel miserable for you a know, week. You know, nothing would surprise me. Listen, we're going to do a little autopsy here in a minute on the elections that were just held. Mm-hmm. But first, I want to tell you something that was real neat the other day. I answered the phone, and there was a guy there who was wanting to make a donation, which Mm -hmm. obviously we appreciate. Mm -hmm. Wink, Um, wink, nudge, nudge. Got to talking to him, and uh, he was calling from Germany. That's cool. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the street that he was on or the city that he was in. (laughs) That's probably for the best. Because I would butcher it. And so, naturally, I was wondering where this guy came across us and found out he listens to the podcast. Mm-hmm. Now, I forgot to ask him how he learned about the podcast, but nonetheless, <laughs> he did. And he says he listens to it, and he was really excited that he was actually getting to talk to someone that was on the podcast, me or you. It baffles my mind that someone would be excited to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> me too, by the way. Anyway, this guy's name is Michael Stanton, and I got to Hi, talk Michael. to him. And, yeah, he uh, actually was from Texas. Okay, cool. He he grew up in um, Gatesville and Huntsville, Texas. Okay. And then again, we got to talking and I forgot to ask him how he wound up in Germany, but he'd been there for a number of years. That's Um, pretty neat. Yeah, that was neat. And, you know, we love talking to our listeners. And of course, if you're listening to the show and you have a suggestion for a show idea, or if you have a question about abortion that you would like us to discuss, we have a form on our podcast page on our website, lifedynamics.com forward slash podcast. You can submit your show suggestion slash question there, and we love to hear from you guys. Absolutely. And we have had shows before that mm-hmm. were totally 100% yep. at the suggestion of one of our listeners, so be sure and do that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we might even have you on the show by phone, depends you on could, what the you situation You could be is. the unlucky victim. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's look at do a postmortem or an autopsy on the elections that just took place. Dissection. As far as the red wave goes, I think we can wave bye bye to that. But it, you know the way I see it, there wasn't really a blue wave. To be perfectly honest, oh no, either. no, we made progress. But to suggest, as some of these people were, that it was going to be a tsunami or a, you know mm-hmm. this gigantic red wave across the country, mm-hmm. that wasn't happening. Well, you know, I'm a bit of an optimist, but even I had skepticism about any sort of wave one way or the other. To be perfectly honest, I always see this as kind of like a tug of war, push and pull. And some years you're going to have a little bit more one direction versus another. Well, my wife and I were talking about it several times, and I think I'd even mentioned something about it here on one of the previous Pro-Life America podcasts. My fear was, and what came true was, that the Republicans were counting their chickens before they hatched. Which is a common thing, yeah. Which is a common thing, and that they were grotesquely overconfident. Mm -hmm. In their minds, it was a done deal. And you could see it, particularly if you watch Fox News. They were just sitting down to watch the carnage happen the night of the election, and it didn't happen. And I would say probably the same thing was true for Democrats, too. Yeah, they thought that they were fixing to get wiped out. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about that. Some of them were making statements that this was a bloodbath, mm-hmm. which didn't happen. So as of the time of the recording this, basically, as far as the Senate goes, it's still a toss-up. I think there's five more seats yet to be called as of the time of recording this. One thing that was really cool is that Republican Katie Britt made history by becoming the first woman to be elected to the Senate from Alabama. So yeah. that's really cool. Speaking of Alabama, uh huh, that was where the red wave was, right? That's the Crimson Tide. Uh, are you talking about football? Yeah, my favorite team, University of Alabama. I hear that they're not really having a tide right now because they've lost a couple well, of games. It, it speaks to how dominant Alabama is, mm-hmm. that everybody gets all upset and talks about what a bad season when they, they're having when they lose two games. Most teams <laughs> would be tickled to death to don't, go through. Don't only lose two games. Don't only lose two games in a season. So it speaks to the Well, it's still early in the season, right? I don't follow football, so it's early. 
right? Question mark? Well, well, it's more than halfway through. So See, this just shows show I don't really watch football. But anyway, that's where the red wave is. Crimson Tide oh, roll, okay. rolling down the field. Right? Okay, okay. okay. Anyway, go ahead. Uh-huh. <laughs> as far as the House goes, the Democrats lost two seats. The GOP was in the lead, but there were 61 seats yet to be called. So that's a bunch of seats. So it's still a toss-up for that. And as far as the governorships, Democrats have gotten two governors in two different states, but the election looks really close in Arizona and Oregon. So, you know, it's anybody's guess as to what's going to happen there. Let me tell you one of the things I think you can expect to see. Mm -hmm. The pro-aborts are going to say, well, this is a referendum on abortion. And they're already saying that. Some of them are already making that point. And they're lying, but, Mm -hmm. but that's their nature. They're pathological liars. I mean, you can't but, really tell why someone's voting for one party versus another unless you were to ask every single person who was coming out of the poll booths. Well, even then, you don't know that you're getting the truth. Absolutely. But I think there's going to be people in the Republican Party mm-hmm. that blame the failure to produce this red wave on abortion. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're lying. Let me tell you something. If abortion hurt the Republican Party in this mm-hmm. election, it's because of one thing, and that is that the Republicans didn't fight for abortion. If you look around the country, all of the ads that were done, mm-hmm. all the language that was used, was used by the pro-aborts to defend abortion. Yeah. And if there was a state where you were going to do it, it would have been Texas. Mm-hmm. We never saw one ad. Did you see one ad? Not that I remember, no. In which one Republican came out here and said, we've got to protect the unborn. Mm-mm. The fact is, if abortion didn't succeed like it should have in this election it's because no one defended the pro-life position yeah even when you were looking at the states because there were i think four or five states that were voting to enshrine abortion in their state's constitutions there was only one state that was trying to protect the unborn Mm -hmm. in their state and that was kentucky so all the rest of the states were voting to protect abortion in their state's constitution. And, of course, Vermont and California, those look to pass, which is really not surprising. Michigan looked like it was going to be passing as well. And uh, Kentucky rejected the constitutional amendment to protect the unborn. And Montana was voting on a born alive measure, which, as of recording this podcast, is still up in the air. It's been closed. So we'll see how that comes out. But the bottom line is... If there was a lack of success on the part of the pro-life effort, Mm -hmm. it's because the Republicans didn't fight. They did the same thing that they've always done for the last 50 years. They will come out here and say, oh, yeah, 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 we're pro-life. Vote for us. Mm -hmm. They say that to the pro-life movement to get our votes. Mm -hmm. But they don't do anything. And they never have. And really, you think about it, the only, for example, in the case of the presidency, the only guy that ever did anything was Trump. Uh, yeah. he, he's the first president we've had that's actually done anything mm-hmm. to help stop abortion. Yeah. Even Reagan, and I loved Reagan to death, but his behavior on abortion was sketchy at best. Mm-hmm. At best. Mm-hmm. You know, I said something some time ago, back when Trump was president. I said, one thing that Trump has done is he's shown the Republican Party how to fight. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently... The lesson didn't take? Well, he showed them how. They're just not going to do it. And we've got our little... Ernie the frill neck Lizard here, which we used to use on the Live Talk set. And for those of you who don't know what a frill neck Lizard is, it's a pretty frightening-looking little lizard that has this ability to splay out kind of a skin or something around his face. Kind of like a lion's mane almost. Yeah, it's and like he a looks. Big, big he, looks really, he looks fearsome when he... He looks he, very fearsome. I mean, he does this thing where he's like... And you can go yeah. online and just punch in frill neck lizard on a YouTube search. But they're total weenies. They do this thing where they hop they up posture, on their legs. yeah. And they spread this thing out and they hiss mm-hmm. and they make all kinds of noises. But the moment... The, but if you take one step toward them, they take off running. And they're known for like their speed and they can run really fast. They, well, yeah, because you're scared. Yeah to death Mm -hmm. this is why i've always said that the republicans if they were honest would Mm -hmm. do away with the elephant as their symbol and use the frilled neck lizard i mean the frilled neck lizard is much more indicative of the republican party than an elephant and an elephant's a noble animal elephant will take on a lion well me personally i think there's exceptions to what you're saying i think there are people in the republican party who do fight not like the frilled neck lizard but fight like something else they're few and far between but there are a few of them out there. A few of them out there. And anyway, I think we saw some of those in these elections. Whatever lack of success mm-hmm. the pro-life issue had in this election is 100%, 100% tied to the fact that the Republicans wouldn't fight for it. 
they told us they were pro-life, so we'd vote for them, but they weren't going to fight for it, so they didn't have to um, go out and face the pro-aborts on it. They're scared to death of the Democrats and the pro-aborts. That's just the reality, and they always have been. Mm -hmm. Again, they are the frill neck lizards of politics. I didn't follow the Montana vote, but I'm wondering if there were any conservative politicians out there who are speaking about the Born Alive measure and trying to garner support for it, or if it was just pro-life groups and just conservatives in general who well, were rallying for that. Let me that. tell you what we need to take away from this election. Mm -hmm. What the pro-life movement needs to take away from this election is something that we've talked about here many times before, and I mm -hmm. used to talk about it on Life Talk for years and years and years. The pro-life movement needs to get over this idea that at some point the Republican Party and the church is going to come riding over the hill and provide us with the replacement troops that we need. It's not going to happen. You know, I want people to get this picture. Imagine that we're standing in this field, we meaning the pro-life movement. Mm -hmm. Across the field, we're facing the juggernaut of the pro-aborts, the Democrat Party, the media, academia, etc. All the usual suspects on the other side. We're facing them. Mm -hmm. And behind us is this big hill. Mm -hmm. And we keep thinking and we keep looking backwards toward that hill and flapping our arms and, you know, like, come on, let's go. We keep thinking the Republican Party and the church is going to come running over that hill. Mm -hmm. They're not. We're alone. And the quicker we accept that, the better off we'll be. And I've made the analogy before, and I'll make it again, to the Alamo. Mm -hmm. For people who haven't studied it and wonder, what's the big deal about the Alamo? Well, it's used in military schools all over the world, even ones that aren't Americans, mm -hmm. to show what it looks like to have people that totally sell out for victory, even to the point of they're giving up their life. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were 187 guys at the Alamo. They were surrounded by Santa thousands Anna. mm -hmm. Santa Ana's armies, thousands of Mexicans. And Santa Ana gave them a chance to surrender. Not just surrender, just leave. Mm -hmm. He offered the Texans in the Alamo the option, because he didn't want to fight there. He wanted to go chase Sam Houston. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to get hung up at the Alamo. He's like, I got better things to do. Yeah, I've got bigger fish to fry than the Alamo. Mm -hmm. And he gave them the option of leaving. He told them they could take their horses and their guns if they would just agree to leave. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, we're staying and fighting. Mm -hmm. And they held them up for 13 days. And that 13 days is what cost Santa Ana, Texas. Mm -hmm. And that allowed the Texans to win at San Jacinto mm -hmm. a few weeks later. So the Alamo was actually a loss. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people don't, don't understand that. They think, well, the Texans must have won at the Alamo. I think people in other states might even think that that was the battle where we won our independence from Mexico. Mm -hmm. No, it was San Jacinto. Yeah, there was a movie that came out, and I can't think of the name. And it's about this guy, and he's visiting Texas, and he's like, oh, yeah, the Alamo. He's like, y'all won, <laughs> won that good, and everyone at the table was like... What? <laughs> no, every single person there was executed. Everyone died. <laughs> <laughs> everyone died in there. What does your idea of a victory look like? Right. Yeah, if everyone dies, and you think that's a victory. <laughs> no, the victory was at San Jacinto uh, mm -hmm. six weeks later. But the reason I raise this is the men that were at the Alamo, a lot of them came there. For example, when Davy Crockett showed mm -hmm. up from Tennessee, yeah, he thought the battle was over. Yeah. They showed up basically because Texas was saying, if you come fight for our independence, mm -hmm. we'll give you a bunch of land. Yeah. And they showed up there and Travis, the commander of the Alamo, had to tell them, no, we're still in the battle. The fight's still going and Santa Ana's on his way. Mm -hmm. They kept on waiting on replacements to come. Mm -hmm. They kept on thinking that replacements were coming. Yeah. That they were going to win because we, they had people coming and they were right. just going to surround and Santa one, Ana. And one group that was supposed to be coming was actually... Houston. Well, Houston was, yeah, but one group that was supposed to be coming was uh, actually hijacked in a city, and 400 of them were put in a big pile and burned. And so they never made it to the Alamo. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until Travis called these guys together and said, look, you guys need to understand something. We're, we're on our own. We're alone. Mm -hmm. Nobody's coming. And not only had Santa Ana given these guys the option of leaving. He did, too. Uh, yeah, Travis gave him that option. He said, you don't owe Texas any more than you've already given. Mm -hmm. If you want to leave, mm -hmm. you can leave. And he opened the gates mm -hmm. and said, anybody here can take your stuff and go take your family with you or whatever and leave. Mm -hmm. They didn't leave. They stayed. And 187 of them knew for a fact that they were going to be they were gonna die. slaughtered. Mm -hmm. But they held out for 13 days. And that bought Sam Houston time to get his army together and mm -hmm. wound up winning. We would be better off in the pro-life movement 
if we would just accept, I'm not saying we don't get as many pro-lifers as we can in politics or whatever, but we've got to accept that the Republican Party is not going to come riding over this big hill behind us. Mm -hmm. When They're, it comes to abortion, we are alone. We are alone. Mm -hmm. The church isn't going to help. Mm -hmm. The Republican Party isn't going to help. And as long as we keep looking over that hill and spending our resources running up to the top of that hill trying to get them to come over, mm -hmm. that's energy that we don't have to use against the enemy. Well, and I think some pro-lifers conflate conservative and pro-life with Republican. Yeah. And there are Republicans out there, elected Republican officials, who are openly pro-choice. Yeah, so right. pro-life and Republican are not exactly synonymous with each other. No, but I'll tell you what is happening. Mm -hmm. And the Democrat side is becoming synonymous for on their side to be pro-abortion. Oh, absolutely. Because if you're not pro-abortion and you're a Democrat, they mm -hmm. will chop you off at the knees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're in the position that they're in. They as a party have united and come together and taken a very firm stance on their position on abortion. Yeah. That's why they're there where they are, because they have united themselves on that. Do we wish that I'm the Republican Party no. or other parties would do that? Absolutely. But right now they say there's only one person who even claims to be pro-life mm -hmm. in the Democrat Party that's elected Congress. And that's uh, what's his name from here in Texas. I can't even remember his name now. And he won re-election yesterday. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we need to start spending our energy more at actually fighting the abortion industry. And as you know, mm -hmm. we're developing some stuff right now for the new dynamic, the new rules that we fight by since Dobbs. Mm -hmm. Which okay. is state by state and neighborhood by neighborhood, yeah. community by community. Because right. starting from your area, radiating out, that's where you're going to have the biggest impact. Right. You know, and most people realize that they might be able to do something to control their local community. Mm -hmm. They can't do anything to control Congress or the Senate or the, mm -hmm. the House or the Supreme Court or the state legislature, but they can have impact in their own community. And, I think and we're going to show them how. I think perfect examples of that is the Sanctuary for the Unborn ordinances that have been passed. Right. So, I mean, the power to get something in your community passed is there. Yeah, recently we saw a situation where another abortion clinic in Texas mm -hmm. has announced they're moving, I think, to Hobbs, New Mexico, if I'm not mistaken. But Hobbs is taking up the issue of Sanctuary City for the Unborn. And now they're saying we're not going to put an abortion clinic in Hobbs, mm -hmm. or they're not going to be able to find a facility or whatever. And we are developing a program, and I'm embarrassed by how much time it's taken, but you know we have a small staff, and oh yeah, and our budget has been cut dramatically in the recent years. That guy who was surprised to talk to you, I don't, I don't think people realize just how small our organization yeah, only four is. Of us here. <laughs> so you got a one in four chance of talking to one yeah. of us. Anyway, again, if the pro-life issue did not have any success that it was supposed to have in this election, mm -hmm. it's because of one thing, and that is the Republicans refuse to fight for it, and we've seen this time and time again for years and years and years. And I just think we need to step back and look at this in a more realistic term and not listen to what the pro aborts are going to be saying and what the media is going to be saying and what some people in the GOP are going to be saying mm -hmm. is that abortion cost them this election, this big red wave. Mm -hmm. First off, the red wave never existed. We didn't cost them anything because it never was there to begin with. Mm -hmm. This was a, something they had in their own minds. But another thing that also shows up is the polling Mm -hmm. showed that there was going to be this red wave. So once again, we see that the polling is never right. Yeah. I don't put much faith in any of those polls, to be perfectly honest. No. What really matters at the end of the day is what happens election day. That's what matters. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the poll that counts. Mm -hmm. And these others are just people's opinions mm -hmm. and how you ask the questions. I guarantee you, I can take a poll mm -hmm. of any subject mm -hmm. and I can get whatever response I want by choosing who I ask and what I ask them. And where you ask it, too. Yeah, well, Absolutely. that'd be who. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I ask people in New York, mm -hmm. I get a different response than if I ask people in Texas mm -hmm. or in Florida. Yeah. Of course, the Florida did have the red wave. Obviously, mm -hmm. Florida... DeSantis got reelected. Yeah, in an overwhelming... Vote. I mean, it was just a... It was a wipeout. Wipeout. In Florida. In Florida. I don't normally feel bad, but I kind of felt bad for whoever they put up against <laughs> DeSantis. Cause... I don't feel bad for him. <laughs> Charlie Crist. I don't feel bad for him whatsoever. This is interesting. Huh. He is now the only guy in the history of Florida mm -hmm. who's lost a race for governor as a Republican, as a Democrat, and as an independent. He's the only guy in history really? that's ever done that. <laughs> Quite a distinction. That is interesting. And a couple of days ago, he was on a statewide broadcast, and they're saying, 
that his um, campaign was going to shock the world in a couple of days and beat DeSantis. <laughs> and he lost by 20 points, which is a slaughter mm-hmm. in, in modern politics. Yeah. But anyway, I just want our people not to be listening to the pundits out there mm-hmm. or the experts. You know what an expert is? What? An expert is somebody that's 50 miles from home with a briefcase. (laughs) That's how you become an expert. You know? Well, you know, as far as the dreaming versus reality, I think every successful society has a bit of the dreamers, but what really makes them successful are the realists who understand Mm -hmm. what is actually going on and what is needed to accomplish the goals of the dreamers. And I think it's good for us to dream, but I think we have to stay grounded because that's the only way that we're going to have the victories that we're dreaming about. You've got to have a pragmatic approach Mm -hmm. at some point. You know, you've got to put feet on your dreams. And Mm -hmm. uh, the Republicans just refuse to do that. And I know that I'm going to get a lot of blowback from people who say, oh, we Republicans are our only hope. You know, if you think that the Republican Party cares about the abortion issue, you're dreaming. Well, if they really cared about a, it, I mean, wouldn't they have made it their goal to eliminate abortion in the 40 years that Roe was there? 50? Yeah, yeah. Now, we're not saying that there's not Republicans out there who don't care. And we're not saying that there aren't even elected officials out there who don't care. But the party as a whole These are not committed. Aren't fight. They mm-hmm. don't fight. Mm-hmm. They use the abortion issue to get pro-life votes. The Democrats fight. The oh, Republicans yeah. don't. And they're the Ernie's, the frill necked lizards of the world. Anyway, that's all I got. You got anything else? No, that's all the wisdom that's my millennial self can come up with. That you can come up with, <laughs> right? Little as it is. Anyway, until next Thursday, remember, Life Dynamics is not here to put up a good fight. Mm-mm, we are here to win. Because winning is how the killing stops. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.